Hey guys, Hardly Briefed in here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to work on creating a sun or uh, simulating a sun in our game environment. Uh, we're going to be using the Game Time Manager and we're going to talk about how you can use the Event Manager as well. So uh, without any hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do in our scene view here, it's a, just a general scene with a, a main menu and a directional light that I've actually relabeled to a sun. I've just called it a sun. Uh, so I just went up here and typed in sun. And then I zeroed everything out besides the Y position here. I've changed the Y position to 10. Now the position uh, of this really doesn't matter, but the rotation for this tutorial is important. So set it to 0, 0, and 0. Uh, at least for now, you can definitely change that later for your own project. Uh, now once you've done that and you set up your sun here, we're going to go to create and we're going to create a 3D object. It's going to be a cube. I'm also going to reset its position by going to that little gear up there, and then I'm going to change its X and Y scale to 20. Uh, so we have like a little platform we can work on. Uh, and then I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that game object. Drag it down here. I'm also going to reset its uh, everything. And then I'm going to change its Y value to 5. And I'm going to drag the green arrow up and just kind of change its position here so we have a cube sticking out of another cube and go in the game view. You can kind of get the idea we're going to be, as our sun is moving, we're going to be casting shadows and this is just going to allow us to see the shadows that we cast. Uh, so let's go back into scene view and talk about how we're going to get the sun going. So basically our sun, which is this directional light, is going to rotate on the X axis. So if you go and click uh, this little circle button up here at the top, this little button allows you to rotate the transform. You can see this red line hopefully on YouTube uh, and we're going to be moving that and that's actually connected to the X axis and we're going to be doing that by script. Uh, and the first way I'm going to show you is just by using the update function and then we're going to incorporate the game time manager. So let's go ahead and on the Sun go to add component and we're going to add a new C -sharp script and it's going to be called Sun it's not what I wanted to. Caps lock is on. I'm going to rename that um, in just a moment. Let's go back into Unity. Come on. Don't let me rename it. All right, here we go. Sun. There we go. Go back into the script. Reload all. I'm going to zoom in some for us, and I'm going to rename it here. So here we have Sun. We have our basic uh, layout. And the the fastest way to get anything to rotate is by getting its transform. So we're since this uh, game object is attached, or since this class is attached to the game object, we can use the uh, this call. So we can say this, and then we'll get its transform, and then we're going to call a function called rotate. And the rotate function takes uh, a vector three of Euler's angles. So we're going to say a new vector three. Oh, new vector three. And a vector 3 takes three values, and it's going to take three floats, uh, and it's going to be in XYZ format. So it's going to be X, Y, and then Z. And since I said we're going to be rotating on the X axis, we're just going to pass in a 1, and then a 0, and a 0. And I'm going to control us to save, I'm going to go into Unity, and I'm going to show you uh, that this little bit of code is going to rotate that sun or that directional light uh, one degree per frame call, per frame. So controls to save, let's go into Unity and test that out. We'll see in the game view that it's going to be rotating fairly quickly, but we're creating our shadow, and you can see the sun drop that's part of the game uh, skybox here. Pretty quick, pretty down, you know, if, if that's what you want, uh, it's perfectly fine. And you can just go in here and change this number to extremely small value if you want it to be even slower. If you don't want it attached to a game clock, uh, you can just put a very small degree value in there and uh, just go into Unity again and I'll show you that it's a lot smoother, it's slower, uh, it feels more realistic, right, because it's a slower sunset or sunrise. Uh, but that's not what we want. We want it tied into our game clock. So the first way I'm going to show you that is by using a, a private void, creating a new method here in the sun class, uh, and it's going to be a private void and we're going to rotate sun. and you guys are going to probably wonder why in the world we're going to be doing it this way or you're going to think at first you know that this is a very choppy way of doing it but basically what we're going to do is we're going to be calling the same function in another method I'm going to comment that out and we're going to be adding this function this method to an event I'm going to change this actually back to a one here and we're going to create a couple more or excuse me that one's going to change but we're going to create a variable now 
Uh, and then we're going to add this to our event manager, and we're going to call an event every second. Uh, and we'll and I'll show you what that looks like. So first, let's do a private void or private float variable here, and this is going to be called degrees in seconds, right? And in our start function, well, actually, we're going to call it in the enable function. So I'm just going to delete all that, and we're going to call void on enable. So when you enable the sun, we're going to calculate degrees and seconds. Well, how do we do that? Well, we need to find our game time manager. So the way we do that, we've done it before, is we find where we call a game time manager. We're going to call it, give it a name, game time, or we'll call it time manager. We'll set that equal to a game object using the capital G and O, uh, and we're going to do a find uh, function method call where we pass in the string and the string is the name of the game object so we're gonna say game time manager which is the name of the game object I uh, titled our prefab here in the hierarchy now if you knew you can also pass in the exact path of where the engine can find this game object so if you knew exactly the path you know in assets prefabs game time manager if you knew exactly where that was you could pass in that um, path and it would find it a lot faster uh, but we're not going to do that so let's do game object that find pass in the string uh, which is the name of the game object then we're going to do get component and we're going to look for its game time manager component and that's all for that little bit of code man and uh, then we're going to be calling degrees per in seconds we're going to set that equal to 360 degrees or F, 360 degrees, and we're going to divide, and we're going to be dividing by the time manager dot game day length in minutes times 60. Right, so we're just converting uh, minutes to seconds here, and then we're dividing uh, 360 by that uh, by that result, and that's going to give us the degrees in seconds, because it's 360 degrees in a full rotation, and we want to find out how much we should rotate. So now I'm going to take that variable, degrees and seconds. I'm going to double click it and copy it. And I'm going to paste it over the one. Then we're going to go to our event manager. And I'm just going to copy this delegate here. This delegate in the event. I'm going to paste it in there. We're going to call this sun for now. Real simple. It doesn't matter. I'm just kind of showing you a way you can handle this. And instead of end of day, we're going to call this sun rotation methods. Uh, and we're going to create a new public static void here that we can call uh, and we'll just call it rotate sun and we're going to want to call the sun rotation methods event oh, like that so what all I've done here is I've created a new public uh, delegate in a static event called sun or the the delegate is called sun and um, we are calling the event called sun rotation methods and we're going to be calling the rotate sun uh, method to the the rotate sun static method to actually run the event. Uh, now again, this isn't the best way to do this, but it's a way to set it up and to show you guys some functionality. So let's go back into our sun class now that we have that set up. And if you remember, in our game time manager, the way you subscribe to an event is by calling the event manager, and then you call the event and you do a plus equal sign, right? and you send in the method that you want to be subscribed so on our on enable we're going to subscribe to that method so we're going to say event or that event so we're going to say event manager dot uh... we don't want end of days we want the sun sun rotation methods and we're going to do a plus equals and we're going to pass it in rotate sun and i think it's just like that so now on our game time manager we are going to want to call that method, uh, that public uh, method, rotate sun that's in our event time manager. So go to game time manager and in our coroutine below the current game time plus plus where we add one to our current game time, we're going to call that uh, event. So we're going to do event manager dot sun uh, rotate sun. I think we called it. Yep, just like that. So every second we're going to rotate our sun and what that's going to look like it's going to be extremely choppy uh, but that's okay for now let's see it's clear all that uh, our game day length is set to one minute I'm going to press play and you'll see it's kind of choppy right it's just blinking and that's definitely not a desired effect that we want but the way you 
the reason why I'm, I'm discussing a way to the way to do it like this is because we don't want it to or say you're working on a mobile device or something that you can't be updating a game's objects rotation every single frame uh, you want more control of it one way to do that is by using an event and calling it to rotate the sun uh, and we can use some math in our sun script to basically we can do a vector lerp where we smooth out the rotation so it seems more gradual uh, but the biggest problem with the, this way Again, if you want to use it this way, the biggest problem with this is that it's going to be uh, jumpy, and you, the user might see if the game day length is short enough. They they might see the shadows randomly moving every couple seconds or something. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I'm going to show you another way to make it a little bit more smooth. So we are actually going to go back in the game time manager, and we're going to comment that event call out. We don't want that anymore, uh, and we're going to create our own coroutine. So we're going to use another coroutine. And it's going to be, we can actually make it a private one. So I'm in the Sun script now. And it's going to be a private, I, it's going to return the type IE numerator. And we're going to call this Rotate Sun. And since I'm doing that, we're going to need to comment out this event, the subscribe call. And we're going to comment out this uh, private void method that we just wrote. Um, Just like that. So I've just done a group comment here with a forward slash and star at the beginning and the end of where I want to comment out. Uh, and again, we're going to call this rotate sun. Uh, what's wrong with that? Okay, we got a return. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a while loop, and it's going to be while true for now. And in this while true loop, we're going to just yield return null. Right. So we're just going to every time we call, we're going to just be infinitely sitting in this while loop until we and we're going to constantly be returning. So we're just going to keep coming uh, back through here and we're going to call the same this transform dot rotation. So I'm going to highlight that what I just commented out like that. And I'm going to paste it in here right above the yield return null and by degrees times second. We're going to multiply times dot delta uh, time. Oh my goodness. If I can find the 8, time dot delta time. Uh, and what this is going to do, it's going to get the time in between the frames for us. So, and it's going to smooth the movement. You can also call it here in the event, uh, or you can, like I said, or you can do the vector3 uh, dot lerp function. And so now that we have this coroutine here, we can simply call it on our on enable function. So, uh, the way we do that, if you don't remember, is by calling start coroutine, and then we pass in the rotate sun. And when this game object's enabled, we're going to pass it, uh, pass it in. Now, there, the other thing we're going to want to do is create a void on disable, uh, which will kill the sun rotation when we. Um, we can use it like very much like we did here. Uh, we can kill the game clock. Uh, which we'll have to use a different way to do that. So let's not, we won't talk about that. We won't worry about that right now. But basically, I just want to show you that we can call, start this coroutine using rotate sun uh, and ro rotate it that way, which is based on our game time clock. So let's control to save. Let's go into Unity here. And I'm going to press play, and we should see our sun rotate uh, a lot more smoothly. And the way we can test this is, like I said, I have our game day length set to one in uh, minutes, right? So we have one minute. So we know at 15 seconds, we should be at 90 degrees. We should be a quarter of the way through our rotation, right? Uh, so the way we're going to do that is I'm going to move the game window. And I'm going to, let's see, I wanted to dock it if it lets me. There we go. That's all I wanted to do. So I'm going to have the game window here. I'm going to press play. And I'm going to click the sun, and we can watch its rotation. You see it's counting really fast. It's at 24 already. And I'm going to pause it when we get round, right around 90, and we should be at 15 seconds. So you can watch here the game clock. And we're approaching 90 now. We're at 90 degrees, and we're at 15 seconds, right? So we are perfectly at noon. So we know that we're calculating our sun movement correctly based on time. And it's going pretty fast because our game day length is short. And you can see the um, the shadow growing as the sun rotates around. And it's going around here. You can see it rotating in the scene view. And you can see that I can move it anywhere. And it's still doing the same thing, right? So you can see I'm moving it. It doesn't matter where this direction light is, like I was saying, as long as that we're rotating it, um, which is pretty cool. 
and pretty simple. So here we're approaching midnight, all right? We're approaching the end of the day, and it's going to come back to where we start. As soon as we hit 60 seconds, it's going to be back at the morning. Uh, so it doesn't perfectly, we're rotating based on our time, but we're not starting at the right time. Uh, and that's what we're going to cover in the next video. We're going to talk about uh, creating more realistic rotation uh, by rotating the sun uh, more than just on its x-axis because the sun doesn't just sit and rise in the same exact degree spot every day. Uh, and we're going to talk about matching it up with our game clock a little bit more in the next video. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time.